The University of Chicago's Master of Science in Analytics program culminates in a capstone project, which allows students to work with an industry partner to understand a business problem, create a solution, and implement that solution in a way that has an immediate impact on that business. The projects at the University of Chicago MSA program take nine months to finish, where we place special emphasis on the most difficult aspects in analytics. Students sit down with the client to define the problem and to define what possible solution the students can deliver to the client. Once they have all the data, they have to spend a lot of time understanding and cleaning and getting the data ready for the model that they are going to use. They have to understand the business requirements as well as the data side equally well. You cannot have a very good solution on the data side without impacting the business. And conversely, you cannot have a very good business solution that is not supported by a data model. Students work to write up a written report and make an oral presentation to communicate the findings from the technical work that they did in language that businesses can understand. In addition to delivering you know, models and delivering insights, they have to map that to actionables from a client perspective. Only then the insights are actually useful in the real life setting and only then it makes an impact on the business. Last year, Goose Island was challenged with a goal. So to get there, we had to outline how we we're gonna invest in our team in the market. We have all matter of data, but the guys on the University of Chicago team can really make this data sing. We had the research design class, which was a quarter long class that required us to formalize the business use case. And we went through that class with Semin and Neil, who really taught us like the methodology and framework that we have to take before actually digging into the data. We're gathering a ton of the data from Goose Island, which is beer sales, uh, point of sales information, both from the wholesaler side and from the consumer side. But then there's open use data, it's everything from Divi bike trips to small business improvement funds. And so we've really scoured that to get a wealth of knowledge around consumers in that market. Well, if we say we've got about two and a half thousand retailers that we're attempting to do forecasting on. And so to do time series forecasting on two and a half thousand retailers is just not realistic. That's not a good approach. So what we have to do is work out which retailers are similar to each other and then forecast on those in a similar way. So the industry buzzword is data science, machine learning, AI. And uh, we've always talked about that and how we could fit it in or, or benefit or, or add value to our organization. While we focused on sales forecasting in this instance, I think it's very adaptable to other portions of our business. So success is, is how we can adopt the internet and big data and adapt this to uh, our current business practices. We're defining queries that go to the API that Twitter has. We pull down a set of tweets from the time period that we want for the products that we're interested in. Basically trying to get a feel for the relative sentiment of a given product. From there, build that as a time series, so that way we can sort of see if any of those lags are significant relative to the Sholey data. It's a live data, and then there are a lot of dynamics that comes into play, but based on what you've done so far, you are limited to what model you can use at what point. But in this scenario, the reality actually now decides what exactly you want to use in terms of how to go best in achieving the results. So we first build a linear regression model based on the keywords and bags that has been strong uh, across correlation with Shelley's ultimate sales data. The point of becoming an expert in this area is so that not only can you do the work, but you can also communicate the work back and have it be applicable to people that are in an organization where they may not be as technical, but they certainly have to communicate a lot. It's about just trimming it back when you're communicating to business stakeholders, because that's really the value that you're supposed to add as a data scientist. You know, you obviously have the muscle through this program that you've developed over the last two years. 
Um, but then when you're communicating to your stakeholder and saying, hey, you know, this is what we're trying to do, they might not be interested in the machine learning techniques, models like random forests or support vector machines and, and the like, but they'll sure be interested in, in what comes out of those models. So Goose Island would take uh, what we're doing with these models and say, you know, do we have a different approach around route to market, around where we uh, deploy our sales force, how we work with our wholesalers, how we incentivize, et cetera. So they're able to take what we're doing and truly make a business impact, which could be separate from how they're making decisions today. And so we started this by really just taking reams and reams of data. This ended up being 2 million rows of data from 2015 through 2018. And this was sp split very granularly into the different zip codes uh, and the like. We appended uh, 24 different data sets, what we're calling the geodemographic data sets. And these were mainly from the Chicago data portal and appended it on to, uh, at that monthly level, the Goose Island sales. Uh, so the constraints that we applied was this is based on uh, Steve's input. So we said that 85% of the visits should be to existing retailers and then 15% to the non-buyer accounts that we identified. Um, and so the results of that we have on the next slide. Uh, so the original approach, um, the 27,000 barrels, that would be if you visited in 2019 exactly the same retailers as you did in 2018. Those visits would be associated with 27,000 barrels of sales. If you uh, visit the retailers that we think you should visit based on the forecasts, that takes it up to 36,500. And if you visit those retailers plus the non-buy accounts that we identified for you, that takes you up to 46.7 thousand barrels. That's, that's, yeah, really that's amazing, uh, especially when you can attach a number to that. You can get down to this level and show we predict to be up 34% if you just follow this route. Yeah, this is a lot more in depth. And be the, the hero of 600 wholesalers for sure. This is something that the beer industry has been trying to solve for a long time. People still rely on their gut. I have 400 employees at Coos Island. I have one analyst. We do have a lot of analytics at our disposal. We just don't have the dedicated time or resources to really use that information. So to have a team dedicated to putting this together for us really helped us out a lot. And this was, quite frankly, with this team and the way this uh, program was put together, very easy. It gave us insight and an ability to tap in some resources we just didn't have. The capstone project is difficult and it's designed to be rigorous so that students are well prepared to solve business problems. Our full-time students are really looking for an immersive experience and they come away with a portfolio that they can bring to their first job interview. Our part-time students often bring projects from their companies to work on as part of the capstone experience. They deepen their understanding of analytics and make an immediate impact on their organization. Through the capstone experience, students are understanding the workflow and the methodology of how to do an industry project. And they also learn how to take something from a prototype to a big enterprise. 